Hey guys, EPP Man here. Um, over the last several months, um, we've been seeing several new earbuds enter the market. Most of the earbuds that we reviewed on the channel have focused on either um, audio quality, uh, noise cancellation. Uh, they've also are fitness earbuds. So we've reviewed earbuds that uh, really focus on fitness. GPS tracking, heart rate monitoring, and also earbuds that know the type of exercise you're doing. If you're running in place, if you're doing squats, or if you're doing push-ups. Well, here come a new class of earbuds. Uh, we've reviewed these earbuds individually on the channel, and today we're going to do a comparison of both of these solutions. These solutions focus not just on noise canceling, but focus on enhanced hearing. So let's go ahead and check out the IQ Buds and hear one. We're going to look at these uh, earbuds, compare them both, and hopefully this will help you decide which one is the best for you. Let's check it out. So we're going to look at several things as we review these. We're going to look at the audio quality. We're going to look at the fit and wear. We're also going to look at the apps that both of these um, earbuds support. Uh, look at the noise cancellation and the audio enhancement capability of each of these. So we'll talk about that as well. We're going to talk about battery life, which is also really important. So all those things will be covered, and the first thing we're going to talk about is what's the same. So these earbuds fall in the same category as some of the high-end earbuds that you see on the market. And the reason why that's the case is because you're looking at a $299 price tag for each one of these. So we reviewed several uh, sport earbuds as well as high-end earbuds on, uh, and headphones on the channel, and they definitely fall in that category. So what we're going to do is talk about things that they do well and they're pretty much alike. So from an audio perspective, let's focus on that first. From an audio perspective, both of them have great audio. These are premium audio products, and you should expect that for the price of $299. So they have great bass, mids, and highs. Everything is clear, uh, especially with the passive uh, and active noise cancellation technology. The experience is very immersive. Uh, so great. You can't go wrong with either one of these when it comes to audio. Both of them, as you can see here, um, have travel cases, which also are battery chargers. Now, uh, some of them, you'll notice with the new Hira, is a little bit larger uh, than the Hira 1. Uh, so the form factor is a little bit different. But each one of these can plug in and charge via uh, USB. And both of them are going to give you um, good battery life and extend the battery life of the earbuds themselves. Now, in both cases, you cannot leave the cases uh, at home. These are not just charging cases, but they're also how you put the earbuds to sleep or turn them off. I, uh, so when you're done with the earbuds, you put them in these cases, and then what will happen is the earbuds will turn off. When you remove them, they also turn on. You cannot put these in your pocket and then put them in your ear and expect them to turn on. Um, also, if you do have any difficulty where they're not responsive, you need to be put them back in these cases in order to get things going. So again, cases have to come with you. Now, both of these are going to bring in several ear tips. And as you look at the video uh, that I did review on each of, of these, you'll see all the tips. And I'll include that in the comment area below. So you have a lot of options when it comes to personalizing the, the feel of the earbuds. Also, each one of these have uh, touch controls. So let's go ahead and open up this one for a second, and you can see this. So these earbuds have a touch control where if you swipe uh, up or down here, you're going to be able to go through different modes. Well, if we look at these as well, they too have touch controls. And the touch controls work the same way. You touch it and you'll be able to answer phone calls. You'll also be able to um, interact with uh, your phone and you know either Siri or uh, Google Now. So both of them are very similar in, in that fashion. Now let's start talking about some of the differences. So the first thing we're going to look at is the earbuds themselves. So I'm going to open this one up, take one out, do the same thing with this guy, and take one out. And let's first look at the overall look. So from an aesthetics perspective, the Hear One is a smaller earbud. And because it's smaller, it tends to disappear much more than the IQ Bud. So the IQ Bud, you can see, larger. Let's put it here in an angle so you can see that. It is... Um, significantly larger as it compares. Now, given the size difference, I don't want to say that you're going to be dealing with um, significant weight issues. So both of these are very, very comfortable to wear, and you don't really run into any kind of uh, ear fatigue when wearing these both. Both of them use um, ear canal technology, so that you're basically uh, shoving this in your ear and twisting it to get into your ear canal. And then uh, you'll notice that both of them have contact points on the bottom. Uh, both of them have our sweat and uh, sweat resistant and uh, 
not waterproof, um, so you can't take a shower with these, but if you do get caught in a light sprinkle, you shouldn't have a problem with these. Both of these have mics in the front, and you can see uh, here. The difference between with this one is that the mic is here and here, and this one is kind of all the way around. What I found uh, with these is that this one tends to pick up more ambient noise, so if I am out walking and it's a windy uh, area, uh, you'll hear kind of a scratchy noise happening because of the wind in the mic, and you have to adjust using the software the uh, the actual uh, amount of feedback or uh, tone it down a bit so that you don't pick up all of that wind. Uh, this one, I haven't received any problems in that with that uh, wind or scratchy noise. Now, both of these um, devices, as they're in their case, will discharge your earbud, and uh, that means that you can't tuck these away and then just pull them out when you want to be able to use them for working out. Uh, they will just charge your battery case and you can see that even as I look at this one, my battery level is pretty low on the uh, case itself. And the same thing is happening with the here ones. Um, and this is just keeping them in the case and then just leaving them in, you know, in, in an idle state. So they will discharge your case. So watch out for that if you do get these. Now, focusing on battery life, and battery life is going to be uh, very different on these. Um, let's talk about, first of all, the IQ Buds. The IQ Buds are going to give you eight hours of audio time. And we're going to measure audio time in two fashions. Uh, first, we're going to look at audio time with streaming music, um, and then also audio time where you're using it for enhanced hearing. So, uh, the streaming of music, as well as um, noise canceling, what's going on around you, you're going to get... Uh, up to four hours of battery life from these, up to four hours. Now I did say eight hours because that falls into the second category. So four hours of streaming, four hours of also um, enhancing um, the environment around you if you're doing both at the same time. Uh, you do get eight hours and the eight hours is really focused on you know the audio enhancement. This is where you're not streaming any music but you're wearing these. You're wearing these in a restaurant, you're wearing these in a convention center, you're wear wearing these on a walk and what you're doing is kind of isolating the noise around you, but then also highlighting the things that you want to hear using the software. So you're on a plane, you're in a restaurant, you're on a walk, and what you're doing is just using these to kind of give you some peace and tranquility from that noisy environment. So uh, once again, four hours of actual use time, um, eight hours uh, if you're just using it for audio enhancement without any streaming. Now the Hear Ones, are uh, there's a big difference. Hear One, you're only going to be able to get these for two hours. Two hours of streaming and also then audio enhancement. So if you're on a plane and you choose plane mode and you're drowning out all the noise of the plane and you're also streaming, either watching a movie, you know, listening to the audio or listening to an audio book or just listening to music, you're going to get around two hours. Uh, if you are using this as an audio enhancement device, you have it in your ear, you're in a conference center, you're in the restaurant, and you want to hear the person that's in front of you, behind you, or just you know enhance your hearing experience, then what you're going to do is you're going to get up to three hours of battery life. So clearly what you see, there's a big difference between battery life between these two, and that's going to be something that's going to, I think in many cases, drive your decision as to which one you're going to buy, especially because of the battery life. Now each one of these, uh, the case is going to extend the battery significantly. So for example, if your typical use case is on a, let's say you're on the commute to the office on a bike ride and it takes an hour, as soon as you go through that commute and you put your earbuds in the case, um, it's going to charge. Now, and it will extend your battery life uh, of your device and your usefulness. So you can charge three, two to three times with these uh, without any problem. Now the one thing again you have to keep in mind, as I mentioned, they do discharge, so you'll want to keep in mind uh, on that and make sure that they're both fully charged when you're using them. Now the both of them do require around an hour to fully charge. So if these are completely dead, it's going to take an hour before you actually have full battery life and the same thing's going to happen with the new Hira. So now let's go into fit. How do they fit? Uh, because they have the multiple ear gels, each of these, uh, it's going to really work well for most people. And I say most because everyone's ears are different. Uh, so getting them to fit in your ear is all going to be based on the different ear gels that you select. Now what I do find is that if you have smaller ears, uh, smaller ears, that the IQ Buds um, 
tend to come out more and they and I'm going to show you um, you know you'll see here in the video uh, you know someone wearing them and how they are more pronounced uh, the here ones because they're smaller they tend to get into the ear much more and they're more discreet so if you're wearing them especially because you're looking for enhanced hearing it won't look as much as you're listening to music or being one of those rude people that have earbuds in and not paying attention to what's going on if you have the here one but it really depends on again the size of your ears and how much of the uh, earbud can actually go in them based on that size. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, overall feel, both of them are very comfortable to wear. I do find personally, based on my ears, that the IQ buds tend to stay in my ears um, much better. Um, I have tried running with these. The here ones tend to fall out of my ears, especially as I get sweat, um, much easier than the IQ buds. And that's concerning to me because, again, these are $300 earbuds, and um, you don't want these to take a tumble, crash, and get all scratched up and all banged up. And especially if you're on a run and you don't have your case, what I found is they have fallen out of my ear once, and when I put them back in my ear, um, they're not working and I couldn't get my audio back until I got home and put them in the case. So that's an issue and something that you should be aware of. But overall, the fit um, is going to be based on the size of your ear, as well as um, you know what the appearance of the earbud is going to be based on also the gels. Now, the gels uh, do a really nice job of noise isolation, both of them. And you'll notice that as we were looking at the gels themselves, um, they're pretty similar, right? So they're standard um, gels. Each one have these gels that uh, you can just put on, and it's going to give you... Um, some good noise isolation as it goes into your ear. So you're going to be fine uh, with either one because they have the small, medium, and large, and that's going to be okay. So now let's talk about um, some differences when it comes to audio enhancements because we're going to focus on the audio enhancement side. So both of these are going to allow you to dial in and dial out, and we're going to see that in the app, the, the noise around you. And they're also going to allow you to enhance what you hear. Now, one of the things I've noticed uh, with these is that there are apps both for Android and for iPhone. But I've noticed that here one, for example, um, isn't really keeping up to date uh, when it comes to the feature and functionality that they have on both iOS and Android. So there's a room for improvement here. So literally that means that an iPhone person could have more capabilities than an Android person. Now, it could be weeks to a month before the features make it to Android, but I have noticed that, especially since I use both, and I can see some differences. Uh, now, one of the differences that I've seen, particularly, is that the IQ Buds have the ability to adjust the audio for each ear. So we may have differences in how much you can hear in every ear, so your left ear may hear one way, your right ear may hear another way, and you may want to adjust it to have the best audio experience. Well, you can do this both in Android and iOS, and literally tone it up or tone it down, to get your best experience. Now here, one does have a configuration um, tool that's part of your um, setup that allows you to, almost like a hearing test, adjust your hearing uh, in each one of the ears. But that's only available on iOS. So if you're an Android user, you're kind of out of luck until it gets it gets to you. Um, and this, the here, uh, the IQ Buds just gives you easier access, in my opinion, to adjusting that hearing from left to right ear than here one does at this time. So now let's move into the apps. From an app perspective, I think that hands down here one has a better app. It is uh, much simpler to use. It is something that you don't really have to think about. It's just uh, very simple to use. Um, IQ Buds has an app that is much more configurable has more configure op configuration options, but I find that uh, it is not as simple to use as here one. So let's go ahead and look at both so you can see what I'm talking about. So the IQ Buds app gives you the ability to uh, choose different modes. So here are your different modes, and what you can do with each one of these modes, you can actually set it up so that as you swipe, your favorites show up, and the ones that are not um, uh, in place uh, won't. You can always come to the app and choose one, but if you uh, don't want to reach into your phone, you can just swipe and go through the settings from each one. Now, um, as uh, we go back, we'll go back to the app, what you have the ability to do here is by using this little dial, 
um, you're able to enhance, reduce uh, the noise um, and your listening experience. So this is a pretty cool uh, way to do that. It's showing you that you're connected and that you also have uh, what your battery life. And I find that when you compare that to the Here Ones, the Here Ones just give you the percentage bar without a percentage. So you have the line there, but it doesn't tell you how much battery you have. So uh, this is going to give you better information when it comes to, or clearer information when it comes to your battery life. Uh, now, the, the you have def several modes here, so you can choose between home, restaurant, street, music, workout, etc. Now, we're going to see the Here Ones in a second. I find that the Here One tuning, when it comes to these environments, is a little bit better. I also find that the hearing enhancement itself, when you choose each one of these modes, is a little bit better on the Here Ones. Now, you can tweak this, and there's um, a lot of different tweaking options that you can go into, um, and we'll go into the settings here. So here what you can do is actually adjust uh, your sync level, and then also um, how you're experiencing the, um, you know, the, the environment around you. And if I go here, you can actually do um, some additional um, equalizing to what's going on. But it does require some time and some patience to play with this and, re and, and get your right experience. You can always reset it uh, to go back to what it was, uh, but once again, there's a lot of configuration options. Now IQ Buds uh, from Nuhira also give you the ability to personalize your left and right ear. So again, this is what I was referring to and it's very easy, very straightforward, both available on iOS and on Android. And what you can do is you can just change uh, what you hear or the volume as well as how these frequencies are being, um, are coming across in your ear. So this is, um, again, configuration on demand. You can just go ahead and modify it once or modify it twice depending on, on your needs. Now this is the uh, Here One app. Um, so right now they're communicating and speaking to each other. Now uh, this is where I would say that there is um, it's a little bit easier to use because of just the way the the functionality is uh, just set up. So I'm going to go into my noise filters, and when I go into my noise filters, uh, things are blocked out, and this is just my preference. Um, you know, I know that with uh, the IQ Buds, you have a list view, but here you have this kind of tile view. And you can choose, I want to enhance the speech in front of me, enhance the speech behind me. I'm in airplane mode, I'm in the subway, I'm on the bus, I'm in a crowd, I'm in the city, I want white noise, I'm in the office. And as you choose each one of these settings, it has already... Uh, a predefined filter, if you would, that is going to filter out the noise that is going to be available in that environment. This is where I find that the Here Ones have just a slight edge above IQ Buds when it comes to the tuning that they have in each one of these settings, and I find that it's really easy um, and straightforward. Now, you also have um, a bypass mode, and the bypass mode just means that all the enhancement and everything gets turned off that you can press here. And then if you are enhancing the f speech in front of you, literally, as you're looking in front of you, you turn to the left, they get, they kind of get drowned out and disappear. And if you look in front, whoever's in front of you or whatever is in front of you gets enhanced. Now, what you can do is just by moving up and down is you can dial a person in or out. So you can increase the noise reduction or you can increase how much um, you're allowing to come in. Now, one neat feature uh, that was recently released by Here One was the ability to do a sample. So by clicking on that uh, location icon, it will automatically take a sample of the environment that you're in and it will suggest what kind of settings you should have in order to reduce the noise in that area to give you the best listening experience. This is where I would say that the uh, Here One app is um, somewhat superior uh, to the IQ Buds version. Now, the one thing that it does lack is the ability to adjust uh, the earbuds from left to right, at least in the Android place. Now, they do have a live mix function, which you don't have um, here, and the live mix function um, really changes the way how how you listen to things. It's not a feature or function that I use. It adds reverb, it adds bass, it adds all these different things that I don't find are very useful. Um, like you don't want to hear your world with echo uh, or with flange or you know with a bass boost because literally it just changes the way you listen to everything. Now this may be good like if you're in a concert setting and you want to just enhance your audio experience. Uh, that's definitely something that uh, would work well. Now the other thing that you have here is um, well, uh, you both have, you notice here the battery level, and this is the area I said it's kind of, the IQ Buds have um, 
I would say a slight advantage. No percentage. I just have a bar. Come on, guys. Why can't you put a percentage just to let me know? Also, there's nothing on the top with a lot of modern devices. I'd like to be able to see the percentage of battery here at the very top. Neither one is doing that for me. So you have to launch the app in order to be able to see it. So we've um, covered a lot on the video. And uh, as I mentioned, the question then becomes, which one is the one for you? We've talked about fit. We've talked about the actual audio uh, quality that they're pretty much on par. I've showed you kind of the differences with the app and the ecosystem challenges that may exist depending on which one you should choose. We've also talked about the audio enhancement uh, technology and how um, here one just has a slight edge over IQ Buds when it comes to just being able to select things and make things very simple and also the filtering and tuning options. Uh, and we also talked about battery which to me is a big deal. So uh, I hope that this video helps you uh, with your buying decision. Um, definitely the IQ Bud strength is the battery life. The strength with the Hero One, I would say, is their app and some of the tuning that they have going on. Um, each of these are going to serve different um, needs, uh, and they're all going to enhance the way you listen and the way you hear music. So if you have any comments or questions about these products, leave it in the comment area below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.